There's a difference between being big and being great. Being big means I got all the likes and the followers. Guys, listen, I got 2.7 million social media followers. I'm here to tell you that is not it. It, it, that doesn't mean what you think it means. Hey everyone, I am Pablo Papaluca, and in today's episode, I have with me one of the top speakers and coaches in the world today in online entrepreneurship, personal branding, and personal growth. Joel Brown, who is the founder of the number one motivational website, addictedtosuccess.com. He's a massive social media influencer with more than 2.7, 3 million followers across his platforms. He's an entrepreneur who built a multi-million dollar online business at a very young age. He has been featured in multiple media and documentaries. And the reason I want to introduce him to you is not because all of all of that, but he's a really nice guy, and I, I want to introduce you to really nice people, <laughs> and he likes to help everyone succeed. So, hi, Joel. Welcome. Pavlina, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. It's, uh, it's good to hear that uh, that's your perception and experience of me, so thank you. It's good to know. Yeah. I have met a lot of people in, in personal growth and, and I think my intuition is getting better and better when I see somebody <laughs> and I interact with them. Um, so where are you joining from today? So right now I'm in Gold Coast uh, in Queensland, Australia. Australia. And I just finished up a workshop. I've got two more days in this workshop. I'm doing my master's in Psych K, which is all unconscious programming which I'm super pumped about. So you're, you're doing know. a master's in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing my master in it. And, uh, and you know, what's interesting at first, you know, just getting locked down with this whole coronavirus situation. I think a lot of people, even that word locked down sounds like a kind of a negative thing. I've kind of looked at it as an opportunity to open up, you know, so I can't go back to Bali where I actually live, but I'm in Gold Coast and I'm making the most of it. I'm learning, I'm scaling my business. I'm connecting with more people. We're holding summits and more coaching sessions. And, you know, I've been able to connect with you too. So yeah, it's how, it's how you look at this situation. You've been doing amazing. I've been watching you and I have questions on that, on how you do it. Uh, but I've been watching you during the lockdown and that's when we had time to meet uh, as well <laughs> yeah. to, to get on a call. But you've run so many summits and you just, your business is booming, right? And now you're doing this psyche, which I want to know more about that is unconscious programming. It is. Yeah. It's communicating with the unconscious and, you know, a lot of modalities, you know, I've been learning modalities for the last 12 years now. And a lot of modalities are very much about peeling back the layers one at a time, you know, and it's, it's, it can be at times multiple sessions with Psych K it's, it's one session, you know, it's one session to get straight to the core unconscious can, uh, limiting. Can, you the, me? Can, can, I, can I use you, can I use this session? Like, and you sort me out if I have any issues. Now? <laughs> <laughs> it's, to, to, to be honest, the be, the best way to do it, uh, is in person because it is also about your experience of feeling the shift in your body and your experience of uh, actually experiencing it happening physically because we do a lot of muscle testing, yeah. right? And we, you can do it online as well, um, which is what I'm learning in my masters. But this here is, uh, oh, it's such a game changer. You know, they have uh, brain mapping where you can actually see the brain activity change and, and you can see things shifting within the, the areas of your, your brain, you know, different areas lighting up and then also the both hemispheres left and right coming together in this cohesiveness uh, to basically create better solutions within your own way of thinking uh, to overcome old program beliefs because a lot of it is on default and autopilot. You know, a lot of what we're assigning as, as you know, what we think is truth within our own mind, it's almost just like left up to our unconscious programs computer you know that sometimes can be glitchy just throwing things in there and saying let's just let's just go with this this story here will keep you safe but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to get you the results that you desire in your life and you know everything you see in your reality right now is a direct printout of your unconscious programs so 
Interesting stuff when you dive really deep into it. I know, and I, I had questions for you about that. But before, before we dive into it, I just wanted you to tell me a little bit about your story. How did you get started with all of this? Why did you get started and on your journey? And how long did it take you to get where you are today, which you are very successful in the online entrepreneurship and personal growth space? So how did, yeah. you, how did all this happen? Like, Share a bit about your story. Yeah, so 11 years ago, I was sitting in the room with a guy by the name of Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, okay? Mm -hmm. Not Leonardo DiCaprio, but the original Wolf of Wall Street. And he challenged me to cast a 10-year vision for success. And I had spent, up until I was 22 years old, I'd spent most of my life just writing things down and having a very basic understanding of what it meant to write down a goal. Uh, and I would, you know, hit some goals and some goals I would procrastinate on and not achieve them. But this idea of having a long-term success, evergreen success, rather than short-term wins, really excited me and inspired me. And especially to craft a future that I could get excited about. And, you know, he challenged us in the room that day. He said, you know, what would your life look like, feel like, how would you act, how would you walk, how would you talk, who would you be surrounded by if you stepped into the ultimate version of you? If you were to live as the 10 years from now version of you today, how would you show up? And I wrote it down. I almost went into this kind of like, I wouldn't say hypnotic kind of state. I would say it was almost like this inspired state of flow where I just started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And at first it was a little bit resistant because it was a newer way of thinking. But as I casted out that 10 year vision and then reverse engineered it and started mapping out milestones and stepping stones, reversing back to the current day that I was in, I got really excited probably. And I got excited for the future. I was like, wow, that whole idea of what you have created so far in your life it's nowhere near as great and incredible as to what you can create in the future, you know? So that's something to get excited about. And, and, and that's what happened to me. I, like it lit the torch from within your good friends with uh, Dr. John Demartini, right? And, and Demartini says it's about being in spirit. That's where the word inspiration comes from. And, and that's what happened to me. I was lit up from within and no one had to tell me, Joel, wake up at this time in the morning or go chase this external motivation anymore. I just was so on fire. I used to get frustrated when I had to go to bed at night and I got so excited when I woke up in the morning because I had something to live for. I had a, a, a big end vision to go for. I knew it was in service of others. I was clear on it. I got excited to share it with people and then people got excited when they heard it from me and they wanted to come and support me in executing the vision. And I think a lot of people don't have a vision. That's why they get excited about supporting other people in their visions too. Because they're like, wow, there's somebody that actually has something that they're living for and going for in life. So, yeah, I, I, caught, the, I caught the vision bug and I just freaking ran with it. <laughs> you I, mean, know? I understand you because um, I, I'm self-motivated like that. When somebody gives me the idea, I take it around. But usually there is something that happens, a challenge, something happens in our lives that trigger us to want to do more and to want to follow that vision and with regards to your life what was your biggest challenge in life that you've had to overcome oh, that's a loaded question <laughs> i've had many challenges um <clears> that i could name a, i could name a bunch of them um i would say probably the biggest two biggest character shaping experiences in my life the first one was i was severely bullied throughout high school you know, I hated injustice. I saw there was a group of guys in my grade that would just go around picking on everybody. It didn't matter whether you were overweight, if you were Asian, if you were dark skin, light skin, tall, short, gothic, whatever. They would come and pick on you. And I saw it and I just got so frustrated. I used to do kickboxing, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, capoeira, the Brazilian martial arts. And I was just like, I've had enough. So I would stand in the middle of it and break it up. And then I became the target. You know, like, oh, here's a challenge. Let's go for Joel. So I spent literally from the back end of year eight all the way up to year, almost year 11, just every recess and lunch just getting picked on in, in phys ed class, 
you know, I'd get picked on and targeted and, and it just got to the point where I just had enough. And I was, I just turned around one day when a guy was threatening me and I'm like, cool, you and me after school. And you know, it, it, uh, it didn't actually happen after school, but a, a month later he came up behind me at school with people he invited in and he King hit me from behind and it turned into this massive fight. And by the end of it, without it being too graphic, a couple of my teeth got punched back and twisted and my nose got busted and my white school shirt was covered in blood. I had to go to hospital. He had to go to hospital. Um, yeah. And it became this whole thing, you know, where I just fell behind in school and, and fell back in my grades. And I had this whole uh, persona that was like, I'm not going to let this beat me. And that's all I knew at the time was I could either become the victim or the victor. And I chose at the time what I thought was the victor reaching that little, you know, fork in the road, <clears throat> but it was overcompensationary success. I did really well after that. I started channeling all that, that frustration. It was like lower frequency, like anger, pride, um, courage. It was like it maxed around courage, but it wasn't like this acceptance and this forgiveness and willingness and joy and peace. It was kind of in the lower end where I was forcing success and I achieved really good success in the music industry. I managed songwriters and producers. I DJed. I produced music. We got signed yeah, okay. under a label. I have like so. very, very similar story. Sorry to interrupt you. But uh, when I was a teenager, I changed schools. I, I went from the most popular, uh, best in class, went to a new school. The kids didn't like, the girls especially, so they form a clique. And they were bullying yeah. on me every day. And, and like you said, um, I didn't, I was crying every day, but it made me stronger. It made me want to get back on, at them by doing more in life. But like you're saying, recently I realized that I was using that force, but it, it wasn't coming from the right place. So well, you need the, the thing too, Pavlina, and you know, we, we know it now. I know it as well because I teach this, but we're not taught how to come from power. You know, in school, we're not taught. We're taught like things we're probably never going to use. Half of it we're definitely not going to use later on inside. I, I haven't used trigonometry le- since I left school. Algebra, I've never pulled that out. You know, so like I'm not utilizing these things, but critical thinking, you know, like understanding maps of consciousness and understanding relationships, you know, understanding how to invest my money, all those things I didn't learn in school. And, and it would have been so handy if we, if we did. But... <clears throat> Now that I know what's power and what's force, I, I started to experience it after I left the music industry. I felt empty and everyone around me was trying to fill me with doubt. They were questioning me and saying, oh, are you sure you want to leave the industry? You know, I was on, in the studio with people like Usher and Pitbull and Pharrell and all these like big artists, but I was like, I feel empty. It's not it. And it's because I chased this elusive thing that wasn't actually the thing that I was inspired by, it doesn't mean it's the wrong dream or goal. It was amazing. I learned so many awesome skills just looking back at it in hindsight. And that, that's what I challenge anyone to do right now is listening to this is like, just know it's not always about just the one passion. You may use that passion as a stepping stone to get to an even bigger passion and become more resourceful because you've learned things from the past passion. And um, when I sat down in the room that day and casted my 10 year vision and got really clear on my values and I got really clear on what I'm good at, what I love, what solution I'll bring to the world and how I was going to monetize it to grow it, to be able to serve more people. That was when I felt inspired. There was a different feeling. It wasn't overcompensationary success anymore. It was, wow, this is like a freedom ticket and I get to help people at the same time too. And we can create a ripple effect of inspiration. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so that's how, when you know you're in alignment and we all do it in different ways. It depends on what you value, yeah. right? People ask me, is like, how do you find your purpose, uh, your true power? And uh, I, I had something similar like you. I went to work in the media, I actually worked in a music TV channel in Greece. I was working with a lot of artists. I was like a public relations manager. And I was... I a was, similar you know, life. <laughs> very similar. You know, like I was in the media, I was working with artists. And I'm, I was miserable and I didn't know why. And actually it was at that seminar, my first seminar ever that I organized 2011 with Dr. John Demartini, that I realized, oh my God, this is what I want to be doing. Uh, when I saw the people and it was just this moment that I found like it was a feeling. But when people ask me, how do I find my true purpose? I tell them, you know, get the exp- go, go with what you're passionate about at that specific time of your life, what draws you. So I was drawn to the media, to music industry as well, to events. 
but then, you know, that taught me things. But what do you answer to people when they come and tell you, how do I find my true purpose, my true power? How, how do you do that? Well, I mean, look, what worked for me was those four questions that I was able to answer. Mm. You know, what are you good at? Mm. That's the first question. Because what I'm efficient in, what I've spent time learning about, right, that I'm up-leveling my skills in, naturally, I'm going to feel good because I have this feeling of progression. So what you're good at is a really important thing. For me at the time, 10 years ago, or 11 years ago now, uh, I was good at computers. I was good at networking. I was good at creating content, like writing and shooting videos and creating images. And, and I was like, cool, well, I'll put those things together. That's cool. The second question is, what do you love? Mm -hmm. Right? What are you passionate about? Uh, even in the word passion, if you trace it back, the Latin root word for passion means to suffer, to suffer for. You know, when you hear that, that movie, Passion of the Christ, the suffering of the Christ, right? It's like he died on the cross and his mission was that. It's like, wow, like he loved it that much. And so it's like, what are you willing to die for? And I know it sounds like really intense, but that, that question is very much in alignment with what your values are. At the time, I valued business, self-development, contribution, teaching, and traveling. So I asked myself, well, what, would, what would a business or a brand look like if I built it around those top five values? Because that means I'm fueling my day with five things that I really loved. And ultimately, that's what I've done. I've created a business where I'm constantly traveling. I'm teaching, learning, I'm building business, I'm self-developing all the time, and I'm contributing as well. So this is what, what we get to do. Each and every person on this call, you know, whether it's health, yoga, cooking, uh, you know, IT, whatever it is for you, start like putting it together and creating a hybrid. What would a hybrid based business or brand look like if I included my top three or top five values? That's, that's a good winning, winning uh, formula there, you know? So what are you good at? What do you love? What solution will you bring to the world is really important. So how are you giving back in some way? How are you becoming uh, part of the greater goings on in life? You know, the, the greater picture, something bigger than yourself really important stuff because it gives your life meaning. You know, in times where you make it about you, you're worried about failing or being perfect, right? And you don't want to be rejected. When you make it about something greater than yourself, you come outside of yourself and you're no longer thinking about you having to be perfect. You're just there to serve. Less chance of actually failing, to be honest. So there's that. And then, like I said, how, do, how are you going to monetize this? So that's a realistic question you need to ask yourself because any business that, that, you know, if you want to scale it and you want to have impact, uh, you want to be able to hire staff, you have to turn over, you have to make money, you know, like nothing grows unless money's moving through your hands. And so, you know, we, we have a lot of people that have limiting beliefs around money. I'd say you're, you're a currency conductor. That's all it really is, is this money coming in, you, you're conducting it like, a, like an orchestra and you're telling it which way to go and how loud to be and that's essentially what it is. Like not the money that I have coming in, I don't have a direct relationship with money, but I look past the money's there, but I look beyond the money. I'm like, why am I making money? What am I going to do with that money? That's more important to me. And when I started focusing on that and the impact and everything that it creates, money became so much easier to make. Mm. I hope that helps. That's, that's all kind of my integration. <laughs> what I did when I was like find your younger. Purpose. Like you say, what are you great at? So I was asking, what am I great at? I was good at PR, at communicating. So I didn't know about personal development at the time. I hadn't been to this seminar, so I went to the media. I was excited by the media. I went to the media. I got experience. And then when I started asking, what am I giving back with what I'm doing? Because I started a PR company. I was doing concerts uh, after I left the TV channels. And I felt I wasn't contributing anything. <laughs> I was doing all these silly social events with all the social leads and so much ego. And at that point, I was like, I'm not contributing anything. I'm not fulfilled by this. Yes, I'm using my skills, but this is not fulfilling. And I started searching. I, it didn't come from one day to the next. And then the monetizing part, it's very important as well because you might be following your passion, but you don't know how to monetize it or it's not monetizable in a way that it will give you the lifestyle you want. So that's why you, you need to get this type of education that, that you offer as well to people, how to monetize their passion. So if somebody wants to, they found what they love and wants to build a, a massive influential brand, a global brand like you, what are the key steps? 
that you advise them to take? Well, I can speak. I mean, it's a case to case kind of thing. It depends on which platform people are drawn to. I think that's a really important thing is, is to work out what's your Rome. You know, I, I teach people that all roads lead to Rome. So you've got to have your key place that is like the hub spot, the mothership, and then you have subsidiaries or avenues that are running into it to be able to draw people to that place. For me, in the beginning, it was addicted to success.com. You know, we've reached over 320 million website views there. Then we had the podcast and that's reached over almost, I think we're close to 4 million or 3.7 million, 3.8 million on the podcast. Now I say that because I want you to understand that that's the thing that also feeds people to the website to be able to get more information. From there, I have my Addicted to Success Academy where people come in and, and I run my mastermind calls once a week, you know, coaching and teaching and training people and we're doing it live over zoom and and it's interactive and that's where i get to spend more time with my community i believe that we did really well with addicted to success and continue to because we make it about community we make it about the movement and you've got to find what makes you different because the game of trying to be better than everybody else is a losing game mm -hmm. it's easier to be different than it is to be better that's so what my good friend Sally Hogshead said. She's one of the top female marketers in the world. And, and, you know, when she shared that with me, it just resonated so deep because I realized, wow, that's what we were doing so well in the beginning. And then when I started paying attention to everybody else, we were like trying to be better. And, th and that kind of pulled us away from our original vision. So we've revisited that and just going back into like, what makes us different? What makes us different is we're coming from service in the way of getting people results. We're not just like a publishing company we're not trying to play that game. There's tons of content out there. There's YouTube videos and podcasts and, and, you know, motivational videos and all that. There's, it's all there for us. It's about spending more time with our people and that's getting people to events like you, Pavlina, you know, having people come to your conferences, events, retreats, workshops, you get to actually meet your people. And then that in itself deepens the connection and it creates loyalty with the tribe and then everyone starts to like move in a similar rhythm so we can create more as a as a group you know because it's tough to do it by yourself so yeah just get your intentions right from the beginning a lot of people don't do that they're like wanting to have the big podcast to just get significance and they're just looking you at can do else. that they, you they can do that but it comes from force not power because it comes from lack it's like i don't have enough exposure and love and approval and significance so I need this to feel that. What happens if that goes away? You can always ask yourself, what's feeding me? And so for me, it's always about, if we make it about the bigger picture and we focus on the tribe, the community, that we're part of something, that we're bringing people to a philosophy of like never give up and build, build upon your dreams and be in a relentless pursuit for something greater in your life, which is what addicted to success is about, optimizing your life, then we're never going to lose. You know, we can do it in multiple platforms and continue to, to build momentum and movement. So get that right from the start because it's going to be a lot easier than trying to, trying to do it the other way and then find that that's just forced. This is power. Like Brendan Bouchard said something, maybe about six years back, I saw him sharing uh, a, a, some content. It was like a talk. And he says, he asked the question, do you want to be the flower or do you want to be the bees? And I was like, Wow. It, it was so simple. Just like, do you want to be the flower or the bees? And I was like, I want to be the flower. The flower is the thing that the bees come to that has the resources that, that the bees get to and you, you nourish, right? Provide. So that was kind of cool. I like that. What people don't realize is how much work it takes to find that and to find that bigger message and the vision and the purpose. And they just want to do it easy and they find somebody else and they just, Copy. This is what most people are doing when they want to build their brand. They just find somebody else and they want to be like this other person. But what happens eventually when you, when you do that? You might build something big, but usually it goes away fast, right? Do you find that? And people can see who is coming from service and who is coming from ego. Mostly. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that. Do you think people can see when this is happening? I think... I think uh... As a collective, we've gotten better at picking up on frequency. And I think that overall, I like all I need to do is look at the old school way of marketing, which was 
quite simple and straightforward to put out an email. If you had a million people on an email list and you put out an email that had some clickbait title and had some bait and switch and some persuasive lines and you had a, a link to say, click here to purchase now. It was a thousand dollar product. You could, you could be a millionaire overnight. It doesn't work the same anymore. It's about building trust. And a lot more people now, even just everyday people that maybe even don't understand branding and marketing on a level that's required in the industry to succeed, they still on a subtle, maybe even on unconscious level, understand that it's really important to build trust with someone first before you purchase. You know, it's very rare. Like a, a, a product needs to be very undeniable and speak very well into someone's pain and convince that person that they have the solution to their pain. It's almost like they're saying that they understand their problem even better than they, they feel it or could say it in their own mind. That's, that's a way to convert and persuade at a higher level. But I think most people, are, uh, their BS radar is pretty high right now. So they're picking up on trash talk out there. They're picking up on inconsistencies, uh, lack of integrity. There's a difference between being big and being great. Being big means I got all the likes and the followers. Guys, listen, I got 2.7 million social media followers. I'm here to tell you that is not it. It, it, that doesn't mean what you think it means because if I can only really in my lifetime connect with maybe 50,000 people directly, then why do I need 2.7 million social media followers? I don't. My mission is to connect with as many of my people I already have. Like we can just stop giving me followers now, just stop it. And I'll just spend the rest of my life trying to connect with the 2.7 million that we have. That's it. Like that. I'd be happy with that. And I think a lot of people think they need more, 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 and they're missing the point and they're not connecting with who they already have there that's, that's being present. They're not present with who they already have. They're missing the point. So I focus on being great because if I'm showing up, I'm supporting and I'm facilitating and people are getting results, I don't need to actively go and try and build my followers because they're going to go tell their friends to come and work with me too. And my people, my coaches that I've brought up, I'm raising up leaders. I'm like, you guys do it too. I'll teach you the frameworks. Let's go. Let's create a ripple effect. So yeah, I think somewhere along the line, we kind of lost sight of what's important and we're going to be careful of that, you know, of straying off the path of, of really serving at a higher level. And I think, um, I think people are starting to realize that that's, that's important and that's where we need to come back to. So that's interesting why, times. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it to my audience because I believe out of everyone I'm watching online, on online branding, you're one of the top, you know, two, three people that I love. Your message is so clear and it's the essence of building a brand, the true essence. I like Gary Vee. He has his own, you communicate it differently. He has something else, you know, but your message is for me is the essence of building a powerful personal brand and a brand online. Yeah. And that's, and, and I'll tell you this too, Pavlina, I haven't shared this before. Like I used to follow Gary's stuff, Gary's book, Crush It. I read that almost 10 years ago. And I told Gary, I hung out with Gary in New York at the VaynerMedia offices uh, about seven years back. So a few years into my journey with Addicted to Success. And I hung out with him. We did an interview. I talked with him. I've caught up with him a few times. And, you know, I don't watch his stuff anymore. Like I know, I understand Gary's message. I get it. And, and like, I'm not trying to look at more and more people's content. I'm just so excited about what yeah, yeah. I'm here to do yeah. and who my tribe is. I'm so present with my tribe that I think if you keep finding yourself constantly, constantly, constantly looking to other people all the time, it means you're not spending enough time on your own craft. And I realized yeah. that about four or five years in and the more time I just spent in like more trust, and my spiritual connection with God, like, God, I know I'm here for a reason. It's unique. I'm here to tap in, like, bring people to me. Like, let's do this. That's when, that's when it started to go more flow. And so if you're listening right now, like, move into that space, learning to trust yourself, you know, getting some reference points, but also doubling down and going in and writing yourself, like getting really familiar with who you are, journaling it out, you know, going and finding mentors in places that you wouldn't usually you know, find mainstream people doing it and just like connecting the dots as well and having fun on that journey. Like the journey gets to be a, a, this process of exploration. It doesn't always have to be like, you've got to do it like everybody else. Yeah, do you. And then you do it so well. Like, like what I said, 
there are many branding experts online, but I, I can see you're so different, such a unique message, because it's you. There are so many wannabe Gary V's today and wannabe everything, somebody else. That's because I learned that I am enough, Pavlina. When you learn you are enough, that's when you start showing up with your own flavor. You don't need to mimic. You also work on yourself and you build your knowledge and you build your experience. Uh, you actually execute it. And, and that's why you're, you are where you are today. Um, how did this COVID-19 crisis impact your life and your business? Have you had any new realizations? Well, my business wasn't, wasn't I would say, not dramatically affected. If anything, uh, it, was a, it was actually a catalyst for more growth because, you know, our revenues picked up for sure. Uh, we have more people coming in. You, you know, we held a summit about a month back with 18 different speakers. And we had, over, I think, over 5,000 or 6,000 people register for it. And, you know, the big question a lot of people were asking was, like, what am I going to do in this time now? How am I going to make money? And the thing that I shared was, yo, the money hasn't gone it's just moved to different places now and you got to go out there and find it. Like it's just moved into different spaces and industries and into different hands. It never just completely disappeared into thin air, you know? And so I think that in itself challenged a lot of people on the call. And I actually got a lot of messages from people later on and we're in deeper conversations with my mastermind group. Well, they're like, thank you for sharing that because it challenged me to think differently. And that's what I said to him. I said, yo, you have to learn to adapt. I've been in the online game for more than a decade. And I, there's so many people that I've seen come and go, come and go. The ones that go are the ones that play the short term game. I don't, I just never do. Like I see myself old and gray standing on a stage at 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, maybe with biohacking 150 years old, rocking out and doing what I love. You know, like I just see that. So I'm not in a rush uh, for significance, I'm not in a rush for, you know, fame and um, wealth or anything like that. I'm, you know, like we're, I'm here to play in a game of, of life first and foremost, which doesn't necessarily contain itself to one industry. But on top of it, I, I think a lot of people that in this COVID situation have lost their presence to what's actually going on. They're either in the past making excuses or they're in the future freaking out, right? So just like bringing yourself into the mindfulness each day and going, what can I create with what I have today? Mm. You know, it's a powerful question. I ask myself all the time, what must I create in order to have a powerful day? Mm. You know, who must I connect with in order to, to create more growth in not just my life, but their life too. You know, like these, these are really important things. You start asking, your brain is a GGS. It's a goal getting system. You tell it to do something, it will go looking for it. It loves that. It's like a dog with a bone. It loves going after things. Yeah. So, so do it in this time. Now's be, the best time to do that. Be present, be in the moment, ask the questions, work with your, your intuition will bring answers. I've been working a lot with my intuition during this crisis, during the pose. Because you have plenty of time to pause and to allow the answers to come. Mm. Yeah, but the thing too, Pavlina, I was going to say, you're good friends with Demartini. And one of the things that Demartini taught me, because he mentored me too, he said, you know, within your business, you got to look at your high income generating activities. So one of the big things that we did when COVID hit, I just, I forethought, okay, cool. If, if this thing was going to play itself out for the next 12 months, right? I was kind of thinking worst case scenario. And as a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting. I think it may play out for a pretty long time, maybe six or nine months. Um, I was like, well, what, what would be a smart move for me to make today so that I'm not the idiot that's 12 months down the line making the same mistakes, you know? So I had a call with my team. I got all the staff on the call and I said, hey, what are you doing right now? Um, what are you doing over the week? Uh, what does your calendar look like for the next 30 days? And I just pivoted and moved the chess pieces around. I said, okay, forget that content creation side of the business right now. I need you to move into this higher income generating activity. I need you to start doing reach out. I need the sales to start picking up. I need this and this and this. And we safeguarded ourselves and made better decisions, you know, and I even sat down and wrote out like where, what areas in my business am I playing small? Started writing it out. Cool. What must I create now? Pivot with introduce, implement in order to be able to go to the next level. And so much came from that experience. I was like, damn, 
I know a lot of people have been hurting in, in this phase and it could have been the same for us, it, but, it, but it isn't because we sat down and we pivoted and we adapted to the game. And there's a book, uh, it's by Anders Ericsson, it's called Peak. And one of the, I would say the most profound parts in the book that I read was that he said that, you know, he works in the neuroscience field and he works with high performing athletes and people at the top of their game. And he said the thing that separates the everyday people from the super, super successful is the fact that the super successful were um, ready and willing more than your everyday people to adapt to change. Like that was the biggest thing. Even in nature, that's what it is, is being able to adapt to change was a game changing thing ultimately at the end of the day. So there you go. That's what you get to do. And, uh, and it's powerful stuff. I think it's also about programming as well. What we we're talking in the beginning though. So if somebody has like a financial block, whatever they do, no matter how hard they work, they're stuck to a certain income level. How would you advise them to rewire? I know it's a big question, <laughs> but uh, how would you advise them to rewire their brain? Yeah, great question. You know, the, the unconscious mind works in a way where it's, it's the habit mind. You know, our body is our unconscious, our unconscious is our body. And so <clears throat> you need repetition in order to create change. But more importantly, you got to understand that all the stories that you have that are going on, whether it's like, you know, fear, anxiety that's around it, whether it's judgment, whether it's, uh, you know, staying in this guilt or shame, they all emit a certain frequency and it's low frequency and they have an energetic charge around it that often when you go to step up, whether you go to put yourself out there, whether you go to approach someone that you like or you, you, you know, walk through the door in your family house and then things are said and it triggers you. Uh, they're all a catalyst to show you that there's something within you that is not resolved. And so uh, a lot of people carry around these three limiting core destructive beliefs, which is I'm not good enough, failure and mistakes are bad and I don't have enough. And if we can get to the bottom of that and really look at it for what it is and, and realize like if you're on the bottom of the graph in the map of consciousness of shame, guilt, anger, right? Uh, pride to pull yourself out of that. It's going to, it's going to require from you to move into acceptance, to move into peace, to move into acknowledgement. It's going to require from you to move into conversations with people and reconciliation and when you move to a space of understanding the fact that when you were young, you were downloading information from zero to seven, you're just downloading, downloading, downloading because you have no reference points. So you, your brain has to bring in reference points to know how to understand the world. That's how all of us are. No human escapes that. And so, <clears throat> you know, I'm 33 years old. So 33 year old Joel's walking around with a little seven year old in his body feeling fear around things that I felt back when I was seven. How am I going to win in the big business world? So it's really important to heal those aspects of my life, going and forgiving, you know, the times where maybe I made it mean that I'm not good enough if my dad got angry one day. Or <clears throat> for some people I know have like sexual or physical abuse. So they're holding this shame. So accepting the fact that it happened for them, and I know sometimes it's hard for people to hear it happened for, not to, when it happens for, it means that I was in that situation and there was a lesson in it. And if I get the lesson from it and no longer holds the same emotional charge. So in order to create change, your thoughts must be more powerful than your emotions and or your emotions even more powerful if it's a positive emotion that you require or you want, right? So mostly it's the thought needs to be more powerful than the emotion to create the change because the emotion is every time I go to step up, I get this fear, this stress, and then I stop and sit back down. And I don't step forward. So when your thought is, I desire to create a future and a vision far greater than the pain I feel in my body now. And I will go to work and get to work. And I get to do the conversation that is uh, the, the roadblock, the thing that's holding me and stopping me and blocking me from realizing I'm already here and everything's already available to me. But it's the one thing I get to do. That's a game changer there when, when you step into it and go, you know what? I'm ready to have that tough conversation. And even if I don't fully feel ready, I'm going to do it anyway because it requires for me to have that conversation to move and do something different to get a different result. And there's obviously way more to that because the unconscious is literally 
like a speed bullet train and your conscious mind is like a little pushing cart. 40 bits of information a second in your conscious prefrontal cortex, mostly. And then the uh, unconscious is 40,000 bits a second. So you could imagine the difference between the two. So if we could tap more into that, we become like Bradley Cooper in that movie, Limitless. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> tap into your subconscious. So I know you, you have to go. And uh, just uh, as a closing, you're... Yeah, the- probably good. I probably got about four minutes or five minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I have so many questions, but uh, we have to do another one with, for the other questions. Um, and next time, probably you come to Cyprus. We would love to bring you. Comment Let's below if you would like to see uh, Joel in Cyprus. And um, my last question is about success habits, habits because you're the addicted to success guy. Um, I see you every day um, in your stories and how you're full of energy. So and you're implementing and you're doing um, like all this energy and all this focus every day. So how do we get to that top level physically, mentally, or energy every day? How do you get to that top level? What are some success habits that you can share with us? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned earlier, when you look at the map of consciousness in the higher brackets, which is power, uh, it very much relates to a spiritual connection. So for me, it's being in prayer with God, knowing that it's greater that I mean, what I'm experiencing in life greater than me and that I can't do it without him, you know? And it's, and it sounds interesting when you think like self-development, it's like, Oh, like how much of it do I give over to God? You know? And, and I believe that we're not just dancing with our DNA. We're here for a reason. We're created for a reason. And so I look at it in a way where I'm like, cool, if I'm co-creating with God, then it's going to be the most inspiring place to operate from when you're in that place of this, it's like a spiritual certainty. It's this God confidence of knowing like someone somewhere out there that I'm connected to is moving some you know chess pieces around with me and we get to actually have fun in this universe and i think a lot of people don't view life like that they just get so caught up in society and so if i make it a habit to to show up each day to be in that prayer to be in that spiritual connection in relationship with god i'm not talking religion institution i'm talking direct relationship with god and i have my meditation where i'm looking after my my mind and you know, I'm not feeling it with negative things as often as I can. Negative things will still get in, but I'm not, you know, no one's perfect. And then I'm, I'm, you know, fueling my body with greens. I'm having my healthy protein shakes and my vitamins and minerals. I'm getting good sunlight. Every day I get sunlight and fresh air. I exercise like five days a week. I, I work out and I journal, you know, I write a lot. I love journaling. It helps me to build self-awareness and it's good for memory retention. And I learn something new every day. I watch videos, I listen to, to podcasts, but I, if I do, I write down that one thing that really stood out to me and I implement it in some way, I bring it into a teaching with my group or I will just go and meditate on it and, and visualize it in. If it's something really powerful that I think would improve my life, I'll meditate and visualize myself implementing that. What will my vision look like? Would it be more expanded? Will I be able to serve more people? Will I feel more connected? So these are some really good exercises that, that work really well. Uh, right. for self growth and, and uh, I don't even call it self development. I call it self expansion because I get to improve others' lives too, not just my own. Great. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> it's Thank always you. a, a, a awesome. pleasure uh, talking with you and uh, looking forward to collaborate more in the future. And yes, for sure. You ask that. amazing questions too, by the way. You're a great interviewer. <laughs> I love it. What a great host. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, bye for now. See you next time. (laughs) Thank you, Pavlina. Appreciate you. Big love. Ciao. Bye. Hey, this is Pavlina. Thank you for watching this interview with Joel Brown. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the subscribe button here on my channel and the bell notification to get notified about my new videos, new content, new interviews with world-class experts on entrepreneurship, online marketing, personal branding, mindset, personal growth, everything you need to succeed in life and business. See you next time.